This is a Momentum Media production. Inside Commercial Property with Rethink Investing. Australia's largest and most comprehensive podcast covering all things commercial investing. Well, g'day, how are you going? Phil Tarrant, uh, co-host Inside Commercial Property with Scott O'Neill, Director, Rethink Investing. Scott, how are you going? You well? Yeah, very good, mate. Very good. That was a, um, you see how I went straight into that and with any sort of uh, bumbling preamble that I normally go through because we're at the pointy end of the election cycle now. We're not here to mess around. And if anyone's picked up the paper over the last couple of days, uh, you'll see Albo's out of lockdown and uh, he posted a picture of his dog uh, with his phone number on the dog collar. So uh, I wonder if he's getting a lot of phone calls from angry punters at the moment, but uh, he's deleted that tweet. But a bit, <laughs> a yeah. bit of pop, pop pop, culture there just kick off. Scott. Mate, I've deliberately not turned the TV on for a couple of weeks. Just mm. for the election, it's uh, gets a bit draining, doesn't it? But uh, oh God, you've got to be across it though at the same time. You've so. got to be across it. And, uh, and, and it's funny because what you choose to – watch or consume in the media, it can absorb you and you think everyone else is absorbed by the same thing. Like yeah, like right now, because of what I do for a living, I'm right across what's going on with the lecture. Because of what I do for the living, I'm right across what's happening with the economy. What I do for a living, I'm right across what's happening geopolitically in the world and what's happening in Ukraine and stuff. So you think everyone else is as interested as you and guess what? They're probably not. They're just worrying about whether or not the the, the Bulldog's going to win on the weekend or Collingwood will get up. Yeah, or we'll talk about commercial property all day. We'll talk about commercial property. <laughs> Which you love to do? Oh, only uh, work hours, mate. It's funny. Um, I used to love talking about property, like you know, social scenes. Your ears prick when you hear someone talking about like what the Sydney market's doing, and mm. you get to a point where it's like, oh, just don't, don't, it's don't right. go there. It's, uh, <laughs> I try and avoid it, right? Like when I go to uh, social, fun- if they're not work, right? So yeah. it's, it's like you know, um, like community type social functions, kids stuff. Like I, I, I try as hard as possible to not get anyone to ask me what I do for a living because I just don't want to talk about yeah. stuff. Open cans oh, of worms. Yeah, it, it does. And then you, you, you sort of, you go, oh, how can I answer a question just to, just how do I answer a question so there's no follow on questions, you know, and, and, uh, if, if you just, you know, some, some people's jobs, I think they go, oh, what do you do for a living? They go, oh, I'm a dentist. People go, oh, okay. They might go, oh, I've got a sore tooth, or they go, oh, I'm an electrician. People go, okay, I might need an electrician, but I try and avoid saying that I am a podcaster and I uh, talk about commercial property. But, um, <laughs> mate, we've been talking a lot about commercial property lately, and, and for our listeners who have been tuning in, uh, you know I'm on a, um, a pathway right now uh, securing a uh, commercial uh, property with the team at Rethink, and we're, we're quite far through that process. Um, but I'm not going to give too much away at the moment. We're at the pointy end of... Uh, negotiation. So I'm going to be a bit cagey. It's just not all said and done yet. So uh, I don't want anyone else jumping in there, uh, scuppering my deal as I'm getting this concluded. But Scott, um, we're going to have some some interesting insights to share uh, next month. We should be able to chat about it next month. Um, I can confirm it is a commercial purchase uh, and I can confirm uh, it's an industrial style property, but that's as much I'm going to give away right now. But Scott's actually getting uh, the real world experience of working with me and uh, struggling to get a hold of me and my feedback uh, to myself uh, is um, you can have all the intent to get this stuff done, but you've got to make yourself available uh, in order to make it as smooth as transaction as possible. And no doubt your your team's a bit frustrated with me, Scott, at the moment. Oh, mate, we've got very thick skin. It's all part <laughs> of it. And yeah, look, it's, it's part and parcel. A lot of the reasons people use a buyer's agent is because mm. they're super busy professionals. Mm. And um, yeah, it requires... A lot of time, even like when someone's doing it for you, like we're very big at, we want you to understand every aspect of the property. So we want to pin you down for an hour, talk you through the property, go through the due diligence. Like it's easy for us to say, just go buy it, Phil, you know, trust us. Mm. Um, But we want you to understand it more, um, no matter who you are. And that sort of, from a long-term perspective, it's a lot better and like mostly for you as well, because you'll feel comfortable with what you're buying and and you'll want to buy it rather than just doing it because you can't. Yeah, and that's a big point, and um, uh, a bit of a shout out to your to rethink rethink lawyers, right? So this is the the sort of in house legal capabilities you have. They've been pretty good on the whole due diligence thing, and they, they've over communicated, and they've, they've certainly um, compared to uh, Resi properties, uh, they've been extremely thorough. And and I must admit, I I've reviewed the information, but I haven't heavily digested it. So I I plan to do that uh, in time, but uh, very rigorous, very thorough, and it gives me confidence um, that uh, you know. As, as this particular deal stacks up from a financial point of view, but it's everything around it. Uh, while you involve lawyers, uh, 
I'd rather have not lawyers in most things. So yeah. if I can avoid it, but um, sometimes you need it. But um, yeah, give us a month and, and we'll be able to report uh, exactly where we are. We will be through a number of different gates uh, by then through the whole due diligence um, uh, process. Uh, we're a bit sort of stuck at the moment on on finance, and most people will find this inside their SMSF. Um, you want to move a lot faster than than probably what the lenders want to move. Um, I've got a really good broker working with me on this basis, but things always take longer than you expect, don't they? Yeah, and um, suit fund purchases, it's a different bank, different rules. So what you're going through is just they're minor delays with finance, but mm. because finance or oh, commercial property is so competitive, it's very cutthroat. Like I was mentioning that to you the other day. It's you will get kicked out of a contract because you're a day late because they've got three or four other backup buyers. It's yeah. it's aggressive. Um, it's a sign of a growth market. You know, you, you'd be dealing with this if you're buying a house in Sydney. You know, to you know, every day of the last ten years, and it's uh, it's similar to what you're going through. And um, we can work through it. Mm. You've just got to get those extra few days for finance, and um, you've got to get the vendors on side. Like I think we're we're looking okay in that department, um, but it's always going to be touch and go and. You know, we do lose a lot of deals. Like I'd probably say out of ten, at least one or two crash. Yeah. Overall, at rethink, and um, it's just due to missing deadlines, and mm. uh, it's part of life. Like you, you can't go in with like really long terms either, because then the vendors won't accept your your offer, or they want more money for it. Um, there's a lot of cash offers, particularly in that sub two million dollar range. There's a lot of guys who've just got cash and they don't need the bank, so always a threat when you're mm. up against those and we're trying to get finance. But uh, but yeah, look, all's going well. I, co- I think the uh, settlement date should be uh, should be met unless there's a major change. So hopefully should, we'll should talk about okay. it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it. And you, what, what I would say now and, and, and for all those commercial investors out there, and we get a lot of feedback uh, inside commercial property, which we, we do enjoy. And we'll talk about a little bit of that in a moment. But um, if you are going to uh, be serious about investing uh, in commercial property. If you want to do it yourself or whether you're using a buyer's agent, there's obviously the hard skills around it. It's it's being able to crunch numbers and do all that sort of work. But there's also the soft skills, um, which I think are just as important uh, if you're operating commercial property. And that's the sort of tact and diplomacy to work comfortably with with all stakeholders. So the vendors and the vendor's representative would typically be a real estate agent. You know, it's not hard, you know, it is uh, a lot more uh, pointier than uh, residential properties, but the same basis of good uh, interpersonal communications uh, can really hold uh, in your favour because there will be delays and there will be need uh, ne- needs to negotiate indifferently on terms that won't necessarily be around money. So develop those uh, good um, professional communication skills. You go a long way in it. If you don't have them and not everyone is built with them, get yourself a good advocate to do it like the guys over at, guys and girls over at Rethink Investing. Now, Scott, some of the feedback we get and um, – you know, you're you're a, a quantified nerd, and I think you've, you've actually got a university degree, which which says so. Um, my university degrees uh, wouldn't sort of hold me as a nerd, but maybe more as an academic. Um, uh, but we're both interested in uh, the economy and how that sort of interconnects with with property. And let's be clear: uh, in Australia, property is one of the drivers of uh, our economy, and always has been, and will be into the future. Structurally, property is intrinsically linked with the long-term uh, health and prosperity uh, of Australia. So if you want to talk about property, you're talking about the economy, uh, specifically if you want to be talking about commercial property. Now, commercial property means largely there's some sort of business aspect to do with the property. It's not someone living in it. It's someone using that property for the purpose of running a business, i.e. the economy. And most of the time, uh, particularly with the top of properties we're talking about, that's the SME sector. So these two things go hand in hand. And we get some feedback, uh, Scott, that we might talk a little bit too much about the economy. But I think it's really being able to draw, and it's it's hard to do, and I think one of the reasons why we do this particular podcast, it's actually hard to sometimes draw uh, that common thread with what's happening with the economy and, and what does that actually play out to uh, commercial property investors and what it means. So these two things are hand in glove. Uh, and particularly at this point in time, we have, um, as we know, we're moving into a federal election, 21st of May, uh, that will take place, who and and what party will be in power, who knows, we'll find out when we get there. But a lot of the information, if you are a consumer of the media right now, is going to be about spiking inflation, it's highest it's been in 21 years, Scott, 5.1% for the year, which which sounds like a big number, it's outside of the band that the RBA is comfortable with at 2 to 3%. Now, this is high school economic stuff. 
Uh, there's talk now, three of the major banks are talking about a rate rise uh, in May. Uh, you may, this is probably coming out around about the same time uh, as that. So I don't know what will happen. CBA is the only bank that said it won't happen, um, but they're all sort of predicting you know, 1.25% hikes um, maybe this year. So these are all economic drivers. And you think, well, what does it all mean for commercial property? So what? Well, let me tell you, it's all interconnected. And a lot of people are talking about the impacts of inflation and negative impacts of inflation. But for commercial investors, you know, a lot of them will be winners um, out of spiking inflation. Yeah. And you're 100% right. And like, I, you know, I do love understanding the economy. Like even when I was 13, my dad was letting us buy Telstra shares and stuff like that. You know, what did your dad do flipping? I remember asking He's an accountant, financial. Oh, he? oh, here we go. You know, yeah. so it all becomes clear. Bean counter, basically, yeah. for a car, right. car dealership. So, you yeah. know, that sounds riveting. Yeah, so definitely creative <laughs> accounting there for car oh, dealership. Most likely. So, <laughs> but yeah, he, he was a classic negatively geared warrior. You know, mm. you know, it was the time you just load up everything you could, make as much uh, cash flow loss as you possibly could. And as a kid, I just couldn't get around that. My head was like, I, I, you know, I didn't like living a totally frugal life for a long-term benefit, you know, 20 years down the track. Um, and when the GFC hit and some loans got called in, it, it sort of, you know, it highlighted the risks of the negative geared strategy. So I was forever inbuilt. Make sure you buy properties with good cash flow because if it doesn't grow, who cares? You've got cash flow. If it grows, that's a bonus. And, uh, you, you know, you've got to be uh, really comfortable with the economy around it to make sure all that revenue is actually going to come in. So I used to like buying high-yielding stocks, you know, like all, they're all the same big, uh, you know, VHBs and all the bank shares and all that just because they paid dividends out. And that quarterly bill was like that was the real profit. That felt more tangible for me at that time. And, you know, that's why we went into the residential markets but bought granny flats and unit blocks like me and my wife, Mina, and it was – um it was great for a while, but then the prices grew too much and the yields were no good. Commercial was the default. And um, and as a, I think we got into commercial much younger than others would in mm-hmm. this age. And that paid a lot of dividends. That like being an earlier adapter into a and I know people have been investing in commercial for five hundred years, but mm-hmm. let's be honest, there's uh, not that many people looking at this because residential growth in Australia has been so profitable with all the growth. But now we're we're seeing this cycle change. You know, there's been huge growth rates, and we're actually seeing double the inquiry rates for new commercial leads now versus this time last year. And this time last year was a really good time. Mm. What, well, that's because of this podcast. That's the only reason. Or well, it's probably it's <laughs> definitely part of it. Yeah, <laughs> no, nothing to do with the great service at Rethink Investing. Should, it's all should, because of this podcast. <laughs> I know. I should thank you more often, Phil. Yeah, you know, you've never said thanks, by the way. But um, anyway, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's it's been good, but. I, what the latest rush of buyers is, is people refinancing out of residential like their home because they've got all this equity and that it's like a use it or lose it situation. Mm. Like you've got a good valuation. Money is still cheap. Yeah, they're, they're talking about the interest rate rises. But if you really just put them on a spreadsheet and put the uh, you know uh, the net yield of a commercial property plus a 2% interest rate rise on your – like you're still positively geared massively, even at 100%, 100% debt. So it makes sense. And this is sort of – where it goes back to your your question, Phil, about you know inflation, you know how to beat inflation, and you know like a lot of people don't uh, you know realize that in, in, they think inflation is everything's going up in price, you know. However, it's really the value of money going down. So what's what costs a hundred bucks today might be a hundred and five dollars next year. It's just because all this debt, all this supply chain issues, the flow of people, all of it's causing pressure on the economy, and. Um, that's going to make it harder, and it, like basically, the value of money today is worth more than it will. You know, it's you need it now, and that's mm. that's why we're seeing inflation higher than it has been, and it, it's going to stay high for a little while, and it'll probably come off at some point. So, you know, all this doom and gloom stuff is, um, you know, there's this. I don't know what the saying was, but like, you know, the reality is never as good as you think, or as bad as you think. Yeah. Like, it's always somewhere in between, and that's something I've always lived my my life by with investing. You know, every time you see these extreme growth stories or extreme crash stories, you, you chuckle at it. Like, I'm numb to it because it's never really what happens. It's in between. Yeah, and if you sorted your stuff out and you've bought well and bought a, and got a good portfolio and you, you've got a good strong, you know, personal balance sheet. These type of seismic shifts are good times. Yeah. 
it's only bad times for those people who may be over leveraged or overstretched. And this goes to the point around some of the incentives around affordability, you know, only saying to, to Aussies, oh, you know, the 5% to get in the residential property and, yeah, the bank will guarantee the rest of the, the, the deposit and the banks will pick up the rest. Like, that's not good no. if you want to move into negative equity uh, situations. And, you know, and that's only a problem if you've got to sell a property or you can't hold a property, right? It's, yeah. It all becomes irrelevant. And most of the stuff that you see happening right now is is largely irrelevant for most Australians because guess what? You can't do anything about it. It's, no. it's going to happen. You know, it, it's how you choose to react uh, to it. And that's, I don't know, all those sailors out there know, you, you know, you can't change the wind, but you can change what you do with the wind, right? Yeah. And and that's that's where we're moving in right now. And, you know, bringing it back to commercial property and the fact that commercial property essentially is where businesses are housed and businesses are intrinsically linked with the economy. If, if lending goes up, it means they might have less uh, access to capital, which may impact uh, the business. But, you know, if inflation is increasing, I tell you, most businesses should be putting their prices up uh, in line with that. And if you've structured your commercial uh, leases properly, um, you should be getting guaranteed at least CPI increases anyway, right? Which means that you can ride uh, the inflation wave yeah. uh, and it's pretty much going to offset any impact on on increases to your mortgage repayments. Yeah. And that that's the key point. People forget that in a high inflation environment, like everything's going up in value, including your rents. And commercial is you know, legally attached to a rental increase that you can see for the next five years what's really going to happen. So we're seeing CPI increases in the order of four to six percent, um, depending a on the state. state. Yep. yep, state based. And um when there's a market review, like I'll use some examples around like Brisbane, we're seeing rents grow over ten percent. It's because the rents are growing faster than inflation because of the supply demand ratio is out of whack. What there's there's not more people prop- want yeah, yeah more people more want properties than what's available. Yeah. yeah. The the market for industrial is never been better from a rental point of view. So you're gonna see above average, above CPI growth rates for many areas. And it's got to do with the cost of building, you know, mm. that's gone up thirty percent or whatever it is at the moment. That's meant that developer margins are squeezed, that means you've got to sell for a higher price, so supply is less prominent or it's gonna be at a higher price for the builder to get their margin. But that CPI equation is is the key because I, and I'll sort of, I just did a quick set of numbers just so that we can quantify this once and for all for people. So let's use a million dollars. So to buy a million dollar property in commercial, you use about 350K. That's 300,000 for a 30% deposit plus call it 50 grand costs, stamp mm-hmm. duty, solicitors, whatnot. By the time you take your mortgage rate of 3%, that's the average we're seeing right now. It used to be 2.5, so it's already gone Inside up. Inside or outside of- uh, super. Let's be outside super, right? Yeah, outside. No, outside. And, yeah. and it's probably even under 3%. I'm just tr- trying to use round numbers. So yeah. 3% mortgage, 70% debt, 6% net yield on the asset. So that's nothing fancy, like mm-hmm. you're buying over 6%, um, but 6% is sort of an average for what we're seeing out there. That's going to spit you back 39000 in your like clear after mortgage after like basically- All costs all connected costs, with holding the property. Which equates to an 11.1% Cash on cash return after you know because you've invested three hundred and fifty, you're collecting thirty nine thousand clear. Mm. That's a good day at the office. Now let's use the hypothetical situation: rates go up one point five percent, and by then you've only had a five percent increase in rent. So it's not like you know. Let's say it, we get smashed with this worst case scenario. All the you know all the rates are now at four point five percent now. So and your rent's only up five percent. So now you in a year. So you're saying let's, let's accelerate a year. You're getting five percent more on your rent. Yep. Because you've got structural CPI increases, however, your your interest rates have increased by one point five percent to four point five percent. Yeah, which is unlikely it's going to happen that quick, mm. but let's say it does. Um, yeah. It'll probably happen over two years, so then you'll have another five percent increase in rents. But let's say you've only had one. Your rent's now sixty three thousand instead of sixty, so it's mm. gone up three k. Your extra mortgage costs are going to bring your cash flow down to thirty one thousand five hundred, which still equates to a nine percent cash on cash return is still very good. You you know, you're not going to get that cash flow and that's year 1. That hasn't taken into account what you really need to look at. Is what happens after the next few years. Yeah, as in chipping away at the principal if you're pumping that money into it. Yeah. So yeah. if you now look at the same 4.5% interest rate on that mortgage, so remember we're 31,000 clear mortgage, our uh, clear interest, or so that's passive income essentially. Mm. Next year it's gone up to um 
34, then it's at 36. And basically, if you look- So that's 5% increases in, in your rent and- Well, I brought that down, down to 3.75. 3. 3. Okay. 3. So I've assumed a long-term CPI of 3.75. Yep. It's just my guess. It's it's probably going to be wrong, but it's not going to be 5% for mm. the next 10 years. But no. your, your property is going to be um, clearing an 8.9% yield in 10 years' time. It's going to be giving you nearly 60,000 passive income. And uh, that, you know that's that's a seventeen percent cash on cash return. And what sort of debt would be left on the principal? Um, I've assumed you haven't paid any. Okay. I've just done an interest only calc, and you've you know you spent all your money somewhere else. Okay. So, that, so it's basically keeping the debt at seven hundred thousand. Mm. So you can see the the equation works well in all these. I guess I don't hear many people. Not many commercial guys are really worried about inflation because they kind of get it's good for rents, it's good for long term devaluing of currency. And the more you leverage into a devaluing currency market, the better. You know, mm. that's why we're not paying ten thousand pounds for houses anymore. Not because, you know, it's because currency keeps getting less and less. It's not backed by anything anymore. It's mm. just printing money is a thing. It's gonna continue to be a thing until maybe one day currency collapses in our lifetimes. Who knows? But assets, especially income producing assets, are the best way to beat inflation because you're not worried that you're going to be negatively geared and sell because you've lost your job. Yeah, You've got income, like even in this small example, you're clearing 600 bucks a week in your pocket. And the point being, you're not even looking at the uh, implications of capital growth on that property during that period of time. So you're saying it's worth exactly, it's, you, it's worth the same as what it was when you bought it. You haven't done anything with the debt. It's just the the positive um, impact of rising rents just puts more money into your back yeah. pocket. So, you know, it's putting $600 in your back pocket every single- Yeah, which is nearly like four four fifty thousand dollars over mm. 10 years. Yeah, it's you not know? bad. That's just your cash flow surplus. And then mm. let's be like, it's not going to be worth a million dollars in 10 years either. It's probably going to be worth 1.5, mm. you know? So you, you, you've merely- you got your uh, you you'll nearly have a two million dollar value or sorry a million dollar profit overall in ten years just going off kind of trend growth. Yeah, yeah. And if you buy it well, you should be getting Another. all the benefits of good capital uplift and structural increases to your rent. It's only you know how how high will mortgage rates go? Yeah, uh, is is the big question. And I can't see it going back to eighteen percent as it was. Um, yeah, and it was only Hawk and Keating were around. And it was only eighteen percent for how long as well? Like yeah, everyone goes, oh, I had to pay eighteen percent mortgages for you know, how long? Did you pay them for? Mm -hmm. You know, probably yeah. for only a, what was it like twelve months? Yeah, it's a moment in time, but yeah. still it hurt a lot of people. But yeah. just imagine paying eighty percent on mortgages. Oh, the economy. But, but not that said, though, you'd be getting if you had that money parked in a in a bank account, at least you'd probably be getting a good return on that money, right? So, horses for courses. And the, the key. Like where I would see a correction in the market is if all of a sudden everyone valued cash in the bank again. Mm. Like you're not going to get a return, even if the mortgage rates are up at say 5%, what's your return in a, in a term deposit? Yeah, you're not going to get 5%, you're better off offsetting. It's going to be less than CPI. Yeah. So term deposits will leave you behind forever. Mm. You're not going to do well through, like if you're happy with Who eroding has, your does money. Does anyone have term deposits anymore? I've never met one. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's, there's millions of people. I remember my yeah. grandmother having turned deposits. It's like, yeah, 3%. Yeah, it's guaranteed 3%. It's good. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. yeah. Look, for some people, it makes sense if you've got a very large amount and you've got, like, you know, no risk, because there's risk in commercial mm. property, Resi. Like, you've got to be, you know, that way inclined to, to like that risk. If you, if you've got enough to survive, and you, that's where you might need your financial advisor to, to map out how long until that money erodes to nothing, you know, and understand the value of money in yeah. ten years' time. And that's important to do that. And, and yeah, you know, by way of disclaimer, we're not giving any financial advice here. It's just a couple of guys having a yarn about property and, and, and how money works within it. And um, you know, to make those significant decisions around long-term uh, financial. Uh, planning, you, you need to be chatting to the right professional financial planner, accountant, whoever you deem to be the most uh, appropriate, just make sure they are licensed and they're working in your best interest would be the tip uh, from me. So um, coming back to to inflation and the economy, and we talk about the uh, impact, positive impact, I, I imagine, for most investors of uh, inflation on rents. Um, but all these other economic influences, which uh, are really becoming more significant at the moment, uh, let's have a chat about their impact on, on commercial property. And by that, we talk about sort of fuel prices, right? Like, you know, f fuel prices is, is one of the sort of headline commodities, which is, is really sort of behind uh, a lot of this uh, inflationary upwards uh, pressure, as in 
uh, you know, a lot of building materials, another big headliner talking about 30% more expensive and all that sort of stuff. A lot of it driven by supply chain uh, issues and the fact that we are a globalised economy now. So it's, it's harder to get this stuff into Australia. And when, when it's here in Australia, it's harder to move around. And then it's harder to get it onto shelves because of all the stuff associated with COVID and restrictions and all these things. And, that, you know, school migration, migration in general, it's really slowed down over COVID. So these things will take some time uh, to play out. But a lot of that is a result of that, right? So these things will change. But how important are those dynamics on commercial property? Because what you think about and you're using those, those examples, building supplies, they need to get here. When they get here, they need to be shipped somewhere. When they're shipped somewhere, they've got to stay somewhere, usually in a warehouse that someone will own. Then it needs to go to a shop. It needs to sit on a shelf. The shop is owned by probably a commercial investor. So all of this is intrinsically connected with commercial property. What do you do about this? Well, I think the biggest, like the, the top, well, let's say start with the top two biggest issues for commercial property is um, flow of staff. Like there is no work. Like we were buying a, a childcare the other day and they had eight, I think they needed 10 people to fill and they've been asking for two months. They found two. You know, major problem for a business. Staff, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny, like, again, I said I, did, I haven't watched the election too much, so I may have missed something, but there's not much talk about, like, there's a lot of talk about giving people jobs, but most people have jobs at the mm-hmm. moment st- statistically, so we need more people to, you know, pick fruit, serve at cafes, um, work in childcare. It's like, this is a big problem for small business. Um one of the biggest I'm, I'm hearing because we do due diligence on on businesses. We call them up, and staff complaints is a big one. Um, we don't hear much about fuel costs and all that. I think that's more of a obviously if you're in the logistics industry, there's extra costs you're going to deal with, but probably yeah. just gets passed back to the consumer. It's a moment in time, and the government's taking a haircut on fuel excise to try and keep those prices lean. Yeah, and, and look, the bill costs are a big one as well. Mm. You know, and. Um, even getting builders at the moment, like you know, I'm I'm seeing some quotes for the house we're building, and the the range is fifty percent between them. You can tell some people don't want the job. Yeah, um, and they're then, just going. If I get it, happy days. Yeah, we need more Irish builders uh, for <laughs> those people listening in Ireland. Get on the boat. They're actually talking about the new generation of uh, ten pound poms. There you go. Yeah, oh, trying trying to get work, them out of it. it. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's they're the biggest ones with commercial, like just keeping businesses because there's a lot of pent up demand. Like. Oh, I was talking to um, my physio the other day and one of the, the staff members there had two jobs. Uh, she works at um, David Jones and she said they've never had more people buying clothes at the moment because everyone's getting back into the office and heaps of moldy clothes too because of mm. all the rain. So everyone's just getting new new outfits and that and record sales. So it's retail's, you know, bouncing back, but this is all, you know, overarching stuff. But it's that's why I'm positive about the economy. Like mm. the, you know, I, I can't see a scenario where – Prices in commercial are going to drop because where, why would you sell an asset that's giving you a, a decent income? Where are you going to put it? Back into cash and get 1%? Or we'll put in the resi property and there, there's, you know, there's talk that they'll potentially see double-digit drops in, in property in Australia over this this cycle. You know, same thing happened sort of during that the APRA intervention of, what was that, 16, 17, you know, but yep. prices, the price, prices don't go up f- forever. No, and, and look, it makes complete sense for double-digit drops because mm. some markets did 30, 35% growth in a year. Like, um, but people forget about that. They go, oh, it's up a 30, but then it's come down. Well, yeah, it's just Overall, sitting at its average. You're still sitting at the average, yeah, exactly. So it's kind of logical it would pull back. And, mm. um, and the, like the fear-mongering and all that's already been taken advantage by the banks, you know, interest rate rises. They're all interest rates have all gone up already. In your like, I've, well, fixed rates are all gone up. Fixed rates have gone up massively. Um, Be- best thing I did, I got a new resi loan uh, last year. Did a rate lock on it, uh, fixed at some two point five percent or something. Nice, like that. brilliant, brilliant. Two years, right? So you beat the bank. Yeah, beat beat the banks. You know, it's uh, not very often you get to do that. But um, but in two years' time, and, and this is what they're talking about now at the resi. Uh, space and but you're probably not hearing the same in, in commercial. I'd like your sense of it. Saying um, there's this uh, there's this cliff. Uh, they reckon sort of 2023 into 2023 when all of these fixed rates come off uh, to variable and it's going to be a rude shock for a lot of investors when all their fixed stuff gets repriced from two percent to potentially 4.5 percent. Um, you know that said, balance sheets at the moment are strong and most Aussies, if you read the report, should be able to weather. Uh, increases, but some people will do it tough, you yeah. know. And and this comes back to commercial property. It just it just seems, and it's a general comment from me, but it just seems a lot more insulated 
against all these economic factors. Yeah, and it it's very logical why. It's sophisticated investors with larger deposits. Mm. There's no 95% loans here. Um, there's no gen- government back guarantees or, you know. No. No. It, it's just a, it's a solid market. And um, yeah, look, the biggest key theme you're going to see for the next five years is income growth mm. in commercial property because of CPI, because of lack of supply of new properties. And yeah, basically devaluing of currency, simple as that. So rents are going. It's happening in resi as well. I'd like, you know, if you're looking for a residential property probably anywhere in the country now, it's it's a battle. Vacancy rates are sub 1% in mm. most markets. And I've never seen that in my investing career. It's normally, remember the the old, make sure you're under 3% and yeah. you're in a good market? Yeah. Now it's, if you see 3%, there's something seriously wrong with that market, mm. like an oversupplied apartment building or, you know, 1% is the new gauge. And um, rents are going through the roof at the moment. Like yeah. if you're in the eastern suburbs of Sydney and you see something for a thousand bucks, you're probably going to have to pay one thousand one hundred because someone else has paid more than asking price. Like rents are going up. But you put that in perspective. Also, is that we don't have much migration happening right now. So this is just the domestic market is buoying uh, the rental market. What happens when you when you tip in a whole bunch of new talented people to come into Australia? It's like the mind absolutely boggles. And to your point, you talk about the valuing of, of the currency. Like that sounds pretty bad, right? But it's just happens, you know, to get some sense for it. It just happens. It just means that $1 today doesn't go as far as what $1 tomorrow will go, you yeah. know, and that, that's all it is. And and this is what happens to economies. And that's the main reason you are and I are in property, mm. resi or commercial. Like you, you stretch your $1 to control $4 of property, you know, 80% loan. Mm. That's a good day, you know, because inflation's call it 3% long term. You know, you're getting 3% on the $4, not the $1. Mm. So you're – you're going to pay a cost. That's your interest rate in between that. But that you sit and play that four to one game for thirty years, you win mm. every time. Like there's uh, unless you can't make your mortgage repayments, and then somehow you get a loan called in and you sell it. The, the it's, worst. It's not time. very often I hear people getting a, a a call on a mortgage, right? Like you know, it's it you'd have to be in you, a really bad. You, you got to be pretty stuffed yeah. uh, for a bank to do that. Banks don't want to do that, by the way. But I tell you what, the banks do want to do, and that's lift rates as quickly as possible and. And for those of you who aren't too close for for how all this works, um, and whether or not it depends your your view of the world, um, they're obviously very vocal in the media right now talking about yes, there's going to be a rate rise next month. Yes, there's going to be a rate rise. You sit there and go, okay, what? Why is that? Why are you saying that, Mister and Mrs. Bankwell? Mm. You know, banks are pretty happy to put rates up, right? Because it means there's more money uh, oh. in their their front door, right? Like so, and you sit there and go, oh, okay, well, yeah, they're obviously they're going to lift rates, but there's this merry dance that happens when rates do go up, and we haven't seen rate rise in Australia for how many years now? 10, 12, yeah. 12 years, something like that. GFC yeah, it's, period, it's, yeah. it's, and 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 they sit around going, who's going to be the first to move? And I can imagine the phone calls go between the the bank CEOs going, who's going to be first this time? You're going to go first this time, <laughs> you know. And and they'll sit there and they'll wait. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not they pass on all these rate rises as they come in resi. Um, what do you think will happen in commercial? Um, look, it's it's going to be tied closely. Like so, the average rates I'm seeing as of uh, this month are. For over three million dollar type loans, that you're looking at sort of mid twos to two point seven type rates. Variable P and I. Variable P and I or interest only doesn't yep. doesn't make doesn't a big matter. difference. Yep. Um, when you go full doc lease stock, yeah, uh, sorry, lease stock that was a full doc loan yep. prior. So lease stocks when you don't have an income, you're using the income from the property. You're normally about a percent higher. Yeah, okay. Or half, four, you know, three quarters of a percent higher. So they're still good rates. Mm. Um, and they've got like we've seen probably a point five to point seven. I've increased since this time last year. So it's already increased a fair bit. Mm. Um, so the banks have moved early, capitalized on this news because um, they know it's coming. So that'll be interesting if they do pass the full increase back to the consumer because they've already dipped into it. So that'll be a double dip mm. in their part. So smaller lenders, you're probably sort of around three ish, 3% type. Like to, so there's a lot of room for an increase. Um, until they hit like six percent, there's not much damage it'll do to commercial. Yeah, and if they go to six percent, they're going to destroy the economy. Yeah, yeah, and they're not going to do that. I think our uh, uh, economic uh, controllers are probably right across that sort of stuff. So Scott, you know, some we spoke about some of the feedback. One of them was that we we talk a little bit too much uh, about the economy, and I think we've given some sense uh, to that here. And uh, 
uh, one of the reasons why I decided to, to secure a property through uh, the guys and girls at Rethink Investing. So we talk a lot more tactical about stuff, and 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 we will get to that uh, next month and and the subsequent month to that as we gear up for settlement of that property, and then we can share all that warts uh, and all. But what other sort of feedback? I know we get a lot of feedback. What other feedback are we getting? And and let, let's sort of pick up some of that and give our sense of it. And best place to send your feedback, Scott, is I can't remember. Oh. It- been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Info at rethinkinvesting.com.au. Yeah, or so, on the Facebook on the Rethink. Uh, yeah, good um, or bad, we love it all. It's um, If there's topics you want us to talk about, yeah, it's good. Like we've been doing this for nearly two years. and um, it's two years. Yeah, getting there. God. So, yeah, we'd love to sort of know which direction we'd, uh, you want us to go. Like we've got huge amounts of listens to mm. this. So as, um, there's always a lot of feedback, which is great. And, um, yeah, so we, we could – you know, obviously, next month we'll talk about your property. We'll go through the due diligence process, but yeah, it, it's important to look at both the ec- economy and the specifics of commercial. I think if you want us to go back to the granular stuff as well, we can do that. There's a lot of resources out there that that we've created over the years yeah, to cover we all that. We probably don't need to repeat a lot of the commentary we have. Like you can go back and listen to those early episodes, which we deliberately did in a way in which uh, they should be largely evergreen, right? You yeah. know, it it is. This is what industrial property is and does and is how it works. This is what retail is. Uh, this is what the office sector is. This is what sort of more specialty property like childcare and caravan parks and servos and, and all that sort of stuff. So you know, we don't really need to update that. Um, nothing really significantly has changed uh, too much. Maybe maybe what we could do, uh, and if you're interested in this, uh, let us know, Is is maybe – peg some some regions uh, commercially. What I'm thinking about potentially is maybe uh, the new Aerotropolis out at Badgerish Creek and we give some sense to how that, that commercial uh, sector will grow around it. Maybe we can do the same with the upcoming um, games in, in Brisbane. Maybe we can have a look specifically what that means for commercial markets there. But I'll also have a look and a lot of it's going to depend on what happens with the election. Uh, I know the, the both parties are talking about investing more in, in regional Australia and I think of you know, uh, growth corridors like like Tugra and Wyong, they're, they're, they're talking about spending a lot of money there in upgrading of infrastructure. Uh, what does that mean for commercial property in those areas? So maybe we can get some more regional specific stuff yep. um, I think would help. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, and uh, you and I are both traveling around the country all the time. Like, mm. you know, those places you mentioned, like we've probably both of us have been there in the last two weeks as yep. well in different times and that. So, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stories out there and, yeah, it's – you know, we're we're heavily investing in all parts of the country, which gives us this really good live feed on the rental market, like one that I don't even think real estate agents have themselves. So that mm. that gives us a lot of confidence with so, that. So do you think, considering what we're, we've spoken about today, and some of these pressures, both negative and positive, on on commercial but also resi properties, um, are we going to be talking mainly around? the income side of commercial property moving forward rather than the capital growth plays or that the capital growth play is still there? Yes, it is still there. My prediction with the commercial property, which is probably a little bit off the beaten track, mm. is commercial property is going to become a store of wealth more than it has been. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm only buying it for the yield. You know, I don't know where that myth came from. This this is just maybe because Resi was, I don't know. It's just a not spoken about thing. But why wouldn't you not buy a really blue chip asset and break even on it compared to losing hundreds of thousands of dollars on a similar residential investment. Break mm. even, I wouldn't do from it. From a cash point of view. Yeah, from a cash. Mm. Like I still want to get a large passive income out of every purchase because mm. we can. But if the market gets squeezed and this whole theme of devalue and currency and you know, you're still going to be buying something and that rent's going to grow on you year after year. So it's still going to be a good buy. It's a you know, that's the worst case scenario. So I think yields are going to get lower than people think. But the next five years is all out growth in rents. So we've come off a yield compression phase. The last five years, like you've seen properties double in value in commercial. Mm. The next phase is the rents are going to catch up because the last decade has probably only seen 1.52% growth rates annually in Mm. commercial across the board. It's going to be probably double that. So do you think you've missed it from a commercial growth play? So you should be buying commercial property now thinking that the growth will come in five years' time? You'll get it every year because of the rental growth, but mm. you're not going to get that ridiculous 20%, 30% growth. There's some pockets in Australia which are still going. Um, yeah. Commercial. But how you will make a mistake in commercial is if you go in this market, go like if you go into the most expensive Sydney or Melbourne market where the rent growth isn't as good. So I'm talking maybe 
CBD type retail or uh, mm. office space. Like there, there's some areas that are not going to do as good as others. But if you've got, you know, all the other fundamentals in you, you know, stacking up, then you, it's, I can't see many, many bad things happening. Mm. Okay. You heard it first. Yeah. If you've got a problem with that, you speak to Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> really investing. Yeah. yeah. But look, not to be overly positive, it, it's really just, you know, on the coal face, I just see what I'm seeing coming through the doors is more people trying to get into this space because comparably there's nowhere better to go. Mm. And people still at the end of the day have cash to invest. So if there is this hypothetically, but it seems like it's happening, if if, if you shift, like you think about it in, as a hypothetical, if you shifted 5% five, 5 of residential investments in commercial, the commercial market would be jammed shut, really. Yeah. It's already pretty competitive. So as more and more people understand and realise the value of commercial property, it's going to make commercial property even harder. Yeah. Um, but I guess the the to offset that is that greater demand would probably put upwards pressure on prices. Yeah, and that's which the, is good for commercial investors. That's the upside of commercial. There's so much demand that could potentially hit it that hasn't. Mm. You know, there's residentials. It's mature. It's yeah. got what it's got. Like the only I, I see more downside in that. And trust me, I'm a residential investor. I I think population growth and all the other levers are going to keep that going well, but there's a there's a whole nother lever that commercial has. You just need, like you said, 5% of the residential market to come this side of the fence mm. and it will create an extreme increased demand. Well, everyone talks about building approvals uh, inside of resi lending and how it's, it's at crisis levels, i.e. we're not at the moment building enough stuff, let alone building enough stuff in the future. Uh, we're seeing uh, a number of high-profile uh, residential Developers go to the wall, which isn't good for anyone. And I know there's a lot of uh, smaller resi uh, developers who are sweating at the moment in terms of projects waiting to get started with a huge spike in building costs and all that stuff with, with a, a market that is softening. What's going on in the development space within within commercial? Are you seeing similar dynamics there? Are you seeing those same jitters? Um, you know, or are they largely, you know, protected? Look, commercial development is picking up in many areas because the margins have crept back in, but mm. then it's been compensated by the the high building costs. So there's, look, it's not easy being a commercial developer because that's another big growth market. A lot of developers are coming to, like my, my company, for example, going, well, I've got this money. I don't want to put it into the next development because mm. there's too much risk. I want cash flow. So, you know, the development market is is extremely risky in a high inflation environment. You know, yeah. that's more like, because you don't want to be buying stuff which has got those types of variables. Like, you know, commercial, even residential itself, you, you know you know what's going to happen. The rents are going to tick up a bit and that, but you don't have that big blowout potential Yeah, because you've already bought it. Um, but like, res like probably the office markets slowed down. There's more residential building going on than, than commercial and that's also helping even the office market. Like I was reading a Knight Frank report this morning and they 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 were looking over 23 cities over Australasia and Asia and 21 of those cities recorded increased rent growth mm. in the last 12 months. Yeah. That's with COVID, with lockdown. So yeah. that proves it's not an under, or it's not an oversupplied market. They're not building much because they, they've sort of parked up what yeah. they normally do. How's that? How's building, uh, how's commercial rents in Wuhan at the moment? Is that, uh, is that going through the <laughs> Would roof? you trust the data? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how some nations are still locking up, but um, uh, it's good, Scott. I think we've covered a lot of ground there. Um, uh, and remember, the email address to send information is Scott. Info at rethinkinvesting.com. You sure the email works? I haven't tried it for a while, but just uh, <laughs> I'm sure it <laughs> Info does. Info at yeah. rethinkinvesting.com. Yeah, but just Google Rethink Investing. As, uh, Do it that way. Send, send a direct message. You can slide into Scott's DMs. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Where do they come from sliding in? I think, one, one of the most annoying terms known to man. I thought you'd know, mate. Wouldn't you? You'd, uh, you would have slid into a few. Man, I don't. I don't do anything. I don't do anything on social media. I, I um either no. I, I I do have a very large social media following. Surprise, yeah. surprise. Anyway, yeah. don't know why. Um, uh, Scott O'Neill, rethink investing. So yeah, pl please let us know. Uh, where you'd like us to take us, so, you know, we'll talk about the the, the property in, and I'm buying this property inside of my uh, uh, SMSF uh, and I will be gearing up to to do some commercial purchases outside of my uh, self-managed super fund uh, over the coming uh, period as well. So I'm uh, happy to share 
uh, what I'm up to uh, there as well. Probably be at a sort of a higher price point. This particular uh, property uh, that we'll, we'll talk through, you know, my brief to Scott was, hey, look, let's just buy something that most people would be buying uh, inside of their SMSF. So we try to make it as not vanilla, but as, you know, uh, if everyone's familiar with a bell curve, um, you know, smack bang in the middle of what most people would be doing. So the example uh, is as um, uh, relevant for all as possible, but I'll be doing it some other stuff uh, as well. Scott, anything to, to finish up with, mate? Any hot predictions? Give me one location right now in commercial property, not where I'm buying. Um, I was going to say that. No, don't. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you like, mate? Uh, look, major regional centres at the moment where yep. you could still get uh, the yield um, because people have – they're seeing that as an opportunity because everyone wants yield now. And that's, mm. you know, like I was going to say before, the number one increased uh, client for us is um, yeah, residential investors. They're yeah. coming because they don't have the yield. So they, there's yield seeking going on because inflation's going up. Yeah. So if you've got a better yield out there, it's going to get smashed. And are they looking to just balance their resi portfolios into a positive position? Or, or they're selling their resi. Mm. Like I've got a lot of clients like, a a dumping, po- yeah, dumping saying, resi investments. Yeah, to saying I'm ready in September, ready in December. Like the, as soon as their settlement happens, they're just mm. like they're pre-warning us to. And is that purely because they they they've gone? Oh, I'm thinking looking at this differently, and I'm chasing yields now. Yeah, like, this. I think, it's funny how it works. Yeah, and they're they're trying to actually retire from their jobs. Yeah, okay. Like you can't do that with rates going up and resi being negatively geared. So mm. if you want to actually get uh, a passive income, this is how you do it. Mm. Cool. Thanks for your time. Uh, Scott O'Neill, Rethink Investing. Go and check these guys out, rethinkinvesting.com.au. Commercial property, if you want to know more about it as well, uh, the team on Smart Property Investment write about it all the time. Go and check it out. Uh, any questions, uh, info, rethinkinvesting.com.au. We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye.